so good good afternoon everybody um you are at the presentation of the SARS postgraduate open day um and for the history of art and archaeology uh, section of the school of arts so uh welcome to everybody i'm anna contadini i'm one of the uh, teachers in the department and also ma convino Together with me is Dr. Christian Lukanitz, who is also a, the MA convener, and we will share this presentation. Uh, we also have Rachel from SOAS Marketing Department. If you have any problems or any questions with the te technology, she's there to help us. Also, I need to say to you that the session is recorded. I hope this is okay for you. We are recording it for those students who may not be able to join us uh, now and they can go back to the recording uh, later on when they can. Um, I hope that you will have questions and you can either um, uh, put your questions in the chat or your points or preferably you come to the microphone. You can unmute yourself and come to the microphone. Um, we can have the, the questions at the end, but if you have urgent questions that are specific to the point we are making, uh, you know, feel free to interrupt us, uh, put your hands up, and then we will take the, uh, the question. Great. So um, I do hope that you come to SOAS and to the History of Art and Archaeology uh, Department to gain an in-depth knowledge of the arts of a particular region culture of more than one particular region cultures, because you can actually uh, choose modules that, uh, that are not just uh, on East Asia, for example, or in the Middle East or in Africa, but you can have uh, wider uh, choices as, as well. Uh, this is one, uh, is the main aim of our MA degrees. The second one, I give you three main ones. So one is to gain an in-depth knowledge of the arts of a particular region and culture. The second one, which is very important, is to develop critical thinking. And if we don't develop critical thinking in SOAS, in the School of Oriental and Africa Studies, where the, uh, the studies concentrate on Asia and Africa, then you know we're not doing a very good job. So we, we have been, in fact, developed not only uh, degrees, but also modules and a mode of delivery our material in a way that is always uh, encouraging students to develop critical thinking. The third point, which is very important, is to contribute to the discourse on decoloniality. And decoloniality, of course, is very uh, important for the regions we, we are studying, Asia and Africa, and it has been at the center of much recent uh, scholarship. And it is one of the central aims of SOAS which is one of the few universities in the UK that to make a formal commitment to a decolonizing agenda. And if you go to the website, uh, the source website and, and type the colonize, decolonizing source, for example, you will be able to see the material that has, that has been posted there and have a read. Right. Um, so these are the three main points. Kristen, can you go, can you change the slide? Right, before, um, before we go into the details of these MA degrees, I wanted to ask you, uh, and if you can come um, to, the, uh, to the microphone, it would be great. I wanted to ask you, you know, what, what is your interest? If you were going to create an art collection, an, an exhibition, what would you collect? What would you put together and why? Come on, don't be shy. Come to the, to the microphone. So that's an opportunity also for us to know what your interests are. 
Anybody? I uh, I would say I would collect. Some... Yeah. Uh, hello. Hello. I would say I'll collect some uh, kind of very old paintings, ancient paintings, Buddhist paintings and stuff. Yeah. Right. So you're interested in Buddhist? Did you say Buddhist? Yes. Yeah. So you're in interested in, in Buddhist art. Well. You're very lucky because Christian is here and he is the expert on Buddhist art mm. in our department. Yes, so, I, I realize I've been following his work and I'm a big fan. I'm a big follower of his work. Wow, Christian, I, you have a fan. <laughs> I, I'm really glad to be in the meeting with him today. Thank you. Oh, that's that's very nice, very kind. It's very kind to hear, yes, very nice. <laughs> Great, anybody else? Any, no, nobody. Um, yes, yes. Hello. Yes, hello. Sorry, I can't see your name. Hello. Can you say your name? I can't see who is speaking at the moment. Uh, Kunj, we can hear you. Um, ah, Kunj. Kunj. We can hear you just speak. Yes. Kunj. We can't hear you at the moment. Are you still there? Now you're you're muted. While we wait if, waiting for Kunj, anybody else wants to come in and tell us what they are interested Hello. in? Hello? Hello, uh, this is Kunj. Could you, oh, can you hear hi. You? Hi, now we can hear you. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, I'm Kunj, uh, I'm from Pakistan, mm -hmm. and um, I've generally been very interested in like drawing analogies between different eras, like in today and the past. So if I find uh, certain objects or any art that uh, kind of uh, depicts uh, a certain cultural practices, I'd, I'd be very interested in collecting those and studying them. Right. Okay. So you're interested mm -hmm. both in the past, especially Pakistani art. Uh, no, not really. Um, um, uh, South South Asia, uh, maybe the partition. Uh, time. Uh, yeah, partition sure. era, and uh, um, a little bit of um nationalism about nationalism in in the subcontinent etc right well that's very interesting we have uh, apart from christian oh we, also have, we also have another colleague crispin bramfoot who is a south asian specialist and he actually we have modules. can you hear me yeah i can hear you sorry i thought you had uh i'm sorry can you hear me Yes, we can. Can you hear me? Something wrong with the uh, technique. Yeah, I can, I can hear you now. Yeah. So I was saying that uh, that uh, with Christian and Crispin, Dr. Crispin Bramfoot, our South Asianist, okay. um, you would be, um, you know, you, you, you would be able to take modules that cover those interests. Mm. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that, that yeah. was great. Okay. Anybody else? Can I? Uh, um, sorry. Can I add one thing? <laughs> um. Um. Basically, I'm also interested in artifacts and like how objects tell, tell stories. So my my very own thesis in 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 the Indus Valley School of Art, uh, art and architecture here, was about uh, this whole museum that's going to uh, represent today's generation. So so I. It's partly because I want to carry, uh, want to have enough um, knowledge and uh, you know of this his history and archaeology, this whole discipline, so I can continue my art project. Well, that's very interesting because we do provide with the history of art and the theories of art, which obviously yeah. um, provide the basis for anything then that you want to develop later. And sure. if you're interested in museums and museology, we have uh, courses. And in fact, we have a brand new um, uh, MA degree, which is called Curating Cultures. Um, mm -hmm. So 
uh, we are very interested, in many of us teach object studies, uh, how to interpret objects. So yes, we basically would cover everything that you are interested mm. in. Interesting, thank you. Good. Anybody else wants to share their interest? Right, well, if not, um, that was a good uh, introduction for, from the two of you. Thank you very much. So uh, what I'm going to, what we're going to, to do, uh, I will go through the MA programs. Um, why study in history of art and archaeology? So as our research culture, careers, and then questions. As I said, you can have questions at the end, but you can also uh, interrupt us as we go along. Uh, Christian, can you? Yes. Oh, so can you go to the next one, please? Well, OK, so the, <laughs> this is a recent photos of the department. Oh, we are not all present, but the majority of us is there. So we're all nicely uh, photographed here. This is a recent one. Um, so the, the department uh, uh, comprises uh, um, experts, um, which provide really a, the broadest range of expertise in non-Western art found anywhere in the world, actually, from Japan to Morocco and everything else in between. So we have Africanists, uh, East Asianists, Near Middle Eastern experts, South Asianists, Southeast Asianists. Um, we don't just do uh, non-Western art as a token addition to a mainstream art course like other universities who concentrate on European or Western art do. You know, the majority of university have a department of art history, which is almost 90% um, uh, concerned with the arts of European or Western art. And then they may have one person who deals with Chinese art or one person who deals with Indian art, a little bit as a tokenism. But uh, we differ because we are concentrated um, on Asian and African art. Of course, when we talk about the theories and when we talk about the connections between artistic traditions, we also talk about European and Western art. So we do use uh, theories that were developed in Europe, but we, we through a decolonizing lens and we do have uh, interest for example, one of my interests uh, is the connections between Middle Eastern art and culture and European art and culture, in particular Italian. So, so that's that's what what we do. So, can we go forward, Christian? Okay. So um, these are the MA programs we have. So we have a main one, which is MA History of Art and or Archaeology. Then we have the MA Curating Culture that I mentioned before. It's a new MA and it's concentrated on uh, curation and museum and museology uh, with practical elements as well towards career uh, patterns. We have an MA, we have two interesting MAs. Um, one is MA History of Art and Archaeology of East Asia with a sort of brother MA, which is MA History of Art and Archaeology of East Asia with intensive language. And the intensive language is so that is an MA over two years. And intensive language, the languages that you can choose to study together with the art history um, program is Japanese or Korean. We then have the uh, MA History of Art and Architecture of the Islamic Middle East and MA History of Art and Architecture of the Islamic Middle East with intensive language. And here the, the languages are Arabic or Persian or Turkish. 
And these are uh, very special degrees. We are very proud to have them. They are over two years, as I said, they're quite intensive. And then of course, there is the dissertation, which is part of the MA programs and it stands uh, as a piece alone in which you are able to develop um, a, a research um, more in depth. Um, sorry, I have something in the chat from Natifa. It's nice to meet you all. I just had a question around different forms of art. I'm interested in the colonial artistic practices more specifically embodied practices, practices concerned with the body. I was just wondering if there are any interest that focus on bodily forms of art and perhaps tracing the history of the embodied practice if body has archival. Well, we do have uh, a, a colleague who um, teaches precisely that within a um, Middle Eastern context. And Christian, if you can, can you scroll down? It's, it's, it's a pity that I can't do that. Can you go down, down here? So if you look at near Middle East here, uh, one of, the, uh, of our colleagues is very interested in architectural boundaries and the body and how the body um, connects, interferes, changes the, uh, the architecture, the urbanism of, uh, of a city and how uh, this is received by the bodies and what, what the bodies can contribute um, in, in, in return. So I'm not totally sure that this answers all the points you're making, but certainly we are also um, interested in that and we provide with that, that module. Okay, Christian, can you go back, please? Yeah, okay, so, so having sort of um, explained what the MAs are, uh, the, the question is why should you study history of art and archaeology at SOAS? And you know, I've already answered partially that uh, that question, um, and the quest the, the the answer is that we are the specialized uh, university with MA programs that span a very wide range of uh, of geographical areas and cultures. You can study Chinese porcelain on Tuesday and modern and contemporary arts in Africa on Thursday. So, so you know that's that's the, our peculiarity. Um, Christian, can you go down? Yeah, I think now uh, with the following um, slides. Uh, I can go through the type of modules that we offer for each geographical and cultural region. So for example, for Africa, we can offer modern and contemporary arts in Africa, Asian Africa on display, which is connected to museum and museology and photography and the image in Africa. Um, then going down to East Asia, we have a, a strong East Asian uh, cohort in the in history of art and archaeology of the School of Arts. So our uh, modules span from China and the Silk Road, uh, the visual arts of dynastic China, China, modern and contemporary ceramics uh, in Chinese culture, Chinese porcelain trade and transfer, which is one of the modules that actually cross over spaces and cultures, Korean art, both um, ancient and contemporary, uh, and Japanese art uh, of the Edo period and shogunal iconography in the Edo period. Um, then we also have, Christian, if you can go down, So near Middle East, we've already seen this. Uh, we have three specialists in, uh, in Middle Eastern uh, art and architecture, and we offer uh, modules that go from Arab painting, meaning the uh, illustrated manuscript culture of the Arab world, 
to architectural boundaries in the body, to the connections, artistic and cultural connections between Islamic art and European art, um, more specifically Islamic art and architecture of the Eastern Mediterranean and the relationship with the Crusades and the, uh, the period of the Crusades uh, and Islamic visual culture. And of course, in all our um, uh, 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 modules, I should say, we not only have, uh, you know, a discussion of the material, but we have a discussion of the theories. Uh, so, and the, our theories are object studies, how to interpret objects. You will uh, find yourself facing with uh, iconography and formalism, with museum and museology, Orientalism, gender, modernity, and postmodernity, decolonizing art history. Um, can we go down, Christian? Yes, and then South Asia, we have already spoken a little bit arts of the Tamil temple, the Indian temple, Tibetan Buddhist monuments in context, uh, interpretive visual expression of the mandala and Gandharan art and its heritage. And Christian uh, can answer questions, especially on this uh, program here. Then uh, we have uh, a, also a strong um, series of uh, modules for Southeast Asia uh, from uh, Hindu art and maritime, Buddhist and Hindu art, um, aesthetics and politics of sexual difference and gender is issues in Southeast Asian art, um, issues of contemporary Southeast Asian art, uh, more particular this monuments and sculptures of Van Gogh, and more general, the figure of the Buddha theory and practice, and Southeast Asia's art histories, which also include um, Islamic uh, art histories. So Islamic art in Southeast Asia. Um, the next one, Christian, I think I, I, I'll, um, I'll now, if, if, are there any questions at this point? Other, otherwise I'll ask Christian to come in and he can continue with the presentation. But if you have any questions or any points, let me see the chat, yeah. Yeah, and anybody have a question at this point? So essentially, I think what needs to be mentioned here is that some of, not all of the modules listed are available okay. in every year. <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, that is also true for the website, uh, but there is, uh, the majority of them are. But if you're coming for one specific module, you would have to confirm that <laughs> beforehand sure. and that sometimes is difficult but be, beyond the kind of more regionally oriented modules we have the the, the overarching theory and transregional modules curating cultures is besides an ma program also a course uh, a very popular one as it uh, turns out uh, and uh, uh, yeah it, and, and covers essentially a broad, uh, the entire regions and displays uh, of objects from the entire regions that uh, we cover. Uh, then uh, there will be a new course on loot, collecting and restitution. These are of course very uh, kind of popular current topics that are discussed, especially in relation to uh, decolonizing as well. Uh, and so, so important kind of research area in uh, art history today. Uh, then there is theory and method in art history uh, that gives you kind of better grounding in the different theories. Uh, contemporary art and the global sets uh, or, or discusses contemporary art in its global connections. And then you have uh, curating the sacred uh, Buddhism and Hinduism on display is another new course uh, to be offered from next year onwards. And so there are 
besides the more general curating cultures, there are specific curatorial courses as well that will be on offer next year uh, that allow kind of more specialization in those areas. Uh, then, of course, you may wonder how we teach, especially in pandemic times. <laughs> and so, so that's why the bracket says in normal times, we actually uh, teach a blend of in-person lectures, seminars, uh, and then museum visits, group activities, sometimes field trips, and in certain courses, even object handling sessions. But obviously, the pandemic uh, taught us all online delivery. And uh, it's, it's foreseeable that for certain parts of our teaching, online de delivery will remain, uh, especially when it's lectures for larger groups. Uh, but it will be a, a relatively small percentage uh, of the, the university experience that you will be having. And for online delivery, as for this presentation, we either use Zoom or uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh, some may also use other tools. Uh, and our kind of online uh, delivery or, or our delivery in whatever form is also accompanied by a, a virtual uh, learning environment called Moodle or BLE, Bloomsbury Learning Environment, that uh, where, where you can access the, you know, uh, the course schedule, um, reading materials, and so on, which we all feed into. And so those, those would be the standard uh, forms. And, and uh, in each MA, of course, you do four modules per term, uh, so two times. And then, uh, the, the uh, third term and the summer are dedicated to the dissertation. So the MA is very short. Yeah, it's only one year, but it is the full year. There is no uh, gap in summer. In summer, you're busy uh, finalizing your dissertation. And I think it's, it's a very intense year uh, because also for modules that uh, in parallel with all the assignments and readings and so on, uh, keep uh, you as a student uh, busy at source, but also I hope engaged and interested. So what is our research culture <laughs> uh, like? Uh, I'll put in here a, a picture that show, shows uh, Louis Didacott and myself just in moving a museum in Ladakh. Uh, and so I have three keywords here on the slide, interdisciplinary, global, and hands-on uh, is quite well represented through that image. Uh, uh, and especially also the hands-on uh, part. And so more broadly, of course, each of us does uh, research in different areas. Uh, in uh, Here I just present two. Uh, one is uh, the project I do together with Louis Didacott, uh, Tibetan Monastery Collections Today, is essentially a project that goes to Tibetan areas in Nepal and India and uh, records monastery collections, uh, but then also addresses questions of, you know, the preservation of the object, the cataloging, the display of the objects and so on. And we actually kind of built um, or, or designed uh, and uh, then designed a museum in one of the monasteries uh, in a room that they already had, uh, had built. And it was essentially then built according to our plans and uh, opened in 2019, uh, just before the, the pandemic. And so that would be uh, things, or, or that, that is one project. Uh, and the picture itself shows Luis uh, essentially interviewing uh, locals in Mustang uh, in kind of lower Mustang about uh, if a monastery should build a museum or not and what should be displayed there and so on. 
uh, to also kind of gather the, the local opinions as well. And so that's part of the, the research. And then uh, another one that uh, is, for example, uh, in China on the trail of the last emperor, it's uh, something that uh, our head of department pursues and uh, kind of involves the, the uh, Forbidden City in Beijing and so on. Uh, and so I think it just shows the range, but in principle, everybody of us uh, has its own kind of research speciality and projects, uh, ongoing projects uh, that we follow. And the research from those projects uh, can, as, or as far as we can, we build the research from those projects into our teaching. Yeah, it's sometimes more, sometimes less, depending. I, I can uh, say from my own experience that it's not always possible, but uh, it's definitely something that we attempt to do. Now, the history of art and archaeology is, of course, part of the School of Arts. So it's, it's uh, placed in this wider setting where we have also colleagues from uh, music and the Center for Creative Cultural, uh, for Creative Industries, Media and Film Studies. And so it, it is a dynamic multidisciplinary school that, uh, and we partially teach uh, especially overarching courses may, may be uh, taught by uh, colleagues uh, from these other uh, departments uh, or, or with these other with colleagues from other departments as well um, theory and method for example and of course this is also a kind of a dynamic research environment as well and this, I think, uh, you have to imagine in the broader context of SOAS as a whole, which, of course, as an entire university focus on, focuses on the non-Western. And so I think uh, what is fairly unique uh, for SOAS is that when you go to, to a cafe, when we can, can do that again without masks, <laughs> Then, then you you may uh, uh, meet uh, people or hear uh, conversations about the same areas you are studying in, uh, but just in a different discipline. And so this is uh, actually quite uh, remarkable for SOAS and the atmosphere. The other uh, big, big advantage of SOAS within London is that uh, the resources that are available uh, to us through the museums uh, with the British Museum in direct proximity through our major libraries, uh, the SOAS Library uh, and the British Library uh, very close by, uh, also the Warburg Institute uh, with its photographic archives is nearby. Uh, we also have our own uh, teaching collection, and actually the image here is an image from the teaching collection, uh, uh, not from the, from the special collections, not from the teaching collections, it's from the special collections in the, the SOAS library. And then we have a teaching collection that is used for uh, curating courses, for example, to create uh, displays. Uh, there is also the Brunei Gallery, uh, uh, gallery with a kind of changing uh, exhibition program that belongs or is part of, of uh, SOAS as well. Uh, and uh, new uh, or among the, the, the buildings, uh, the Senate House uh, building is, is essentially a new uh, building, but it also contains uh, a major library that can also be used along with the the National Art Library at the VNA, the Victoria and Albert Museum, which would be another kind of major resource uh, within London. And this is, these are just the most important ones for 
uh, us uh, here in London, but uh, there are many, many other possibilities as well. Let's say, for example, the, the Royal Asiatic Society and their uh, events and so on. So I think there is a lot of opportunity uh, in London in that sense. And accordingly, uh, we're uh, working currently on essentially having more uh, hands-on uh, elements in our teaching, also in our MA teaching. Uh, you already heard that uh, certain curating courses have uh, hands-on elements already, uh, object handling, uh, for example, but we are working on, on broadening that. That won't be uh, the case uh, for next year, even though you may through one form or in one form or another through your studies, uh, through the engagement of uh, one of your teachers, be involved or at least learn about hands-on activities as well. Uh, if if you think in terms of careers, there is, of course, a broad uh, range of uh, jobs that, in the end, uh, you can do with an, a degree at, at uh, the his, History of Art and Archaeology uh, Department. And what I think remarkable is because we have uh, students from all over the world we also have a global impact in terms of what students uh, do after the studies here. And uh, this list is just, yeah, just lists the most important or the most uh, common uh, works that uh, graduates of the, our MA program uh, go into, uh, of course, many are related to arts, uh, like museums and galleries, auction houses, art archives. Uh, some, of course, will continue uh, with an academic career, uh, especially if that is their passion. But then there are also possibilities that you may not uh, immediately think of, like working in NGOs, different uh, government sectors, agencies, uh, cultural and creative industries uh, today is getting kind of a more, more and more prominent uh, position and also uh, international aid related uh, projects, for example. So, so there is a, a kind of broad range. And as an example, I've just brought up one that was recently announced, a former MA, 2006-2007. Uh, uh, Eva Langrid uh, was uh, kind of, uh, or became the new artistic uh, director of Freeze London, which is a kind of con contemporary art event that, uh, and her responsibility will be the strategic, strategic mm -hmm. development of that artistic program of that uh, London Art Fair. And uh, further alumni profiles, of course, uh, can be consulted on our web page as well. And so, so it just shows also that you don't need to kind of study further on to have a successful career with an MA uh, in the history of art and archaeology. So with this, we can, I think, turn to further questions from your side. You can either put them in the chat or just unmute yourself and speak it in the microphone. Any questions? No. Sure. Don't be shy. You can come to the microphone and ask anything. Yeah, or we'll write it in the chat. If... Yeah, or we'll write it in the chat. <clears throat> I 
so obviously in, there are uh, compulsory modules <laughs> that that then they're kind of recommended ones and then they the ones you can uh, choose freely according to uh, the MA program that you choose much of that kind of detailed information is found on the website as well uh, but if it's maybe unclear uh, yeah you can always email me specifically uh, I'll, I'll provided my email address in the uh, chat because it's not on the PowerPoint. Will you ask it now? <laughs> so, um, so Neil says, does COVID, how has attendance of lectures and tutorials changed? Yeah. Uh, let's put it that way last year everything was online <laughs> uh, and uh, students were actually all over the world <laughs> uh, at least in my courses they were quite literally yeah. all over the world but i think in all courses in all courses yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, so, so there are students who passed their may of last year without actually having been in london at all uh, and some uh, were extremely successful in doing so. Uh, now, post COVID, we uh, have, like, you know, adapting to have to adapt to the situation that is here in the UK. Uh, case rates are still very high, uh, which uh, means for this term that uh, seminars will be held in person but lectures will be uh, provided online and uh, but that may also change in term two uh, with more uh, in-person teaching uh, being organized and being enabled uh, by the school uh, what also changed now is that that uh, group activities uh, between students uh, will be enabled in term two and so i think it's uh, by the time you would start in 22 uh, we hope that it's actually back to normal with the exception of maybe large lectures that may still be held online um, but otherwise it would be yeah in-person delivery and uh, the usual in terms of attendance, uh, yeah, it depends what how the course is delivered. If life attendance is or, or one of the, the side effects of uh, doing events online is recording. Yeah, if uh, lectures are recorded, uh, students who are in a time zone that that makes attendance life uh, very inconvenient would of course prefer to simply read uh, or listen to the recording afterwards at, at their convenience and so there is a certain amount of, of students when you do online delivery that prefer to not to attend the live class uh, but uh, uh, to listen to a recording. Uh, in that sense, it, it, it affected uh, attendance a little bit, but it's not uh, major. And obviously, uh, tutorials and seminars are now uh, in person. And except if the student is not yet in London, the uh, students just attend as usual. I hope that answered yeah. that. that question. Yeah, because um, some of the seminars and tutorials, in fact, are split into two groups. Yes. One is in person and one is online. So that the people, people who are in London can come in person finally, but those who are still unable to come can uh, be offered a tutorial online. So we have a mixture of the two. Yeah, and, and sometimes, as in my case, one has uh, the, the, those who are not in London join the 
in-person seminar online. <laughs> yes. uh, that, that is in my course, but it's actually very difficult to uh, kind of make because... that interactive. So, so I actually think yeah. in the end it's uh, yeah. yeah, it's better to be here in person. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, one thing that I wanted to add um, uh, as a final remark is that. Um, um, while thinking about your uh, your MA for next year, um, try and do a study plan that it's um, exciting for you, that it's also coherent with uh, your interests. And you can always um, contact one of us to to look over your study plan and see whether you know it makes sense, whether it would be acceptable whether there are other options that you might not have uh, thought about. So, you know, you can start building your study plan from now and don't hesitate to contact us about it. It's much better to come already ready with an idea of what you want to do, uh, because as Christian said, it's one year very intensive, so you can start thinking about it in advance and that would uh, sort of facilitate you yeah and maybe what's important in that uh, connection is if you can't decide between two courses you can still do that in the first week <laughs> yes. Yes. if if necessary uh, because it may not always be uh, that easy to decide it which course sense. to take yeah any other question Right. Well, maybe then uh, we can close here. Well, we, uh, you know, I mean, for us has been um, a lot of work to change to change teaching to online teaching. <laughs> but actually, as Christian was saying, uh, th there is there is a silver lining in the sense that there are aspects of online teaching that will remain. Uh, which are useful, like the recording of the lectures, for example, and um, and so on. So, but you know, we haven't stopped. We we go on, and in fact, we are opening up new courses, new degrees, as we you've seen, and um, and yes, we're looking forward to see you. Yeah, thanks for coming today. <laughs> thanks for coming. Rachel has a a message our last session of the day is our student panel join here so uh, that would be good if you go there because then you can listen from the students themselves yes rachel did you want to add anything yeah if uh thank you so much for that great session um students if you would like to um hop on over to our last session of the day um this is an opportunity for you to hear from um current students at soas so I've popped the link there in the chat. So feel free to uh, use that to get in. Um, but thank you again for attending this session. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks everyone, bye. -bye. bye.